video on Reckless. Okay. Y'all already know. Make sure y'all comment more videos down um, to react to. Definitely gonna check out some more. Um, but you feel me? Got Larry Elder. Pretty sure that's how you so pronounce the name. Let's get in a video. It is beyond dispute. Water is wet, sky is blue. Hello. Donald Trump is a card carrying bona fide racist, yeah. right? right? Yeah. Okay. The president of the United States is a racist. His own words leave absolutely no doubt about that. What he is saying is not racially charged. It is flat out racist. Hey, and by the way, this is uh, transparent because of copyright issues. I don't want this, of course, makes his supporters racist, right? But for people who look like me, other minorities, women who have been, well, let's just leave this to race. This president has said and done so many insensitive and bigoted and racist things that if you support for him, you, if you support him, people like me want to understand why you ignored so much. You know, to just be grossly generalistic, you could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> But, but black unemployment, historical lows. I think the economy is doing absolutely great. And it's particularly reaching into populations that heretofore have had very bad problems in terms of jobs, employment, and the opportunities that come with full employment. So African-American unemployment is at its lowest level. I give uh, President Trump, and I've said this before on Squawk Box, I give President a lot of credit for moving the economy in a positive direction that's benefiting a, a, a large number of Americans. Yeah, but he's still a racist. The problem here is that yeah. the president has unfortunately used language in the past uh, that will, we will have a lot of difficulty in, in erasing, uh, even with uh, an eraser, uh, with the, the words uh, 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 unemployment drop. Uh, because I, I think some harsh and painful words are, are just kind of hanging out here uh, across the country uh, as it relates to African Americans and some but other you, minorities. Think, and what about the First Step Act? That's a law that allows prisoners who believe they have unfairly long sentences to have their sentences reviewed. And since President. <clears throat> I actually heard about this. Yeah, I did hear about this. I heard about this. Yeah. That's actually something that's really nice. I feel like that's something nice to do because it's a lot of people that. Um, needs uh, that that second chance um, you know yeah. I feel like there's a handful or even half of a lot of people that's in prison or in jail that really should get that second chance um, <clears throat> just to you know I'm gonna say yeah I feel like everybody deserves like a second a second chance yeah. for real prisoners who believe they have unfairly long sentences to have their sentences reviewed and since President Trump signed that act, 1,000 people have benefited. 90% have been black men. They've had their sentences reduced an average of almost 70 months. The Senate tonight Damn. taking bipartisan action on something substantial, overwhelmingly passing a major prison reform bill. The First Step Act eases federal sentencing for nonviolent offenders, aims to reduce repeat offending, and expands early release programs. Did he say bipartisan? <coughs> Mr. President, thank you so much. It's almost hard for me to speak about this without being emotional. In the process of this, this has brought together friendships that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. I'm now texting buddies with Van Jones. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Van White Lash Jones. How significant do you think this is? By the way, one of your partners in working on this yes. was Jared Kushner. Jared Kushner, whose, whose father went to prison and who, who fought mm -hmm. on this as hard as I. Yeah. This is history. This is history. Right now, you're witnessing history on the floor of the U.S. Senate. Mr. Perdue, for, it is Mr. a Christmas Perdue. miracle underway Why? where, for the first time in a generation, Republicans and Democrats mm -hmm. are arm in arm tonight saying, we are sending too many people to prison. They're coming out bitter and not better. We want to make a tremendous difference. I want to say uh, Hakeem Jeffries uh, on the left, Jared Kushner, and Donald Trump on the right have brought together a coalition like I've never seen. And what about Trump's music? I, li I like that, though. I like that. 
for everybody to, to, to come together to, I like that. That's nice. Uh, on the and we're left, still learning. Jared Kushner and Donald Trump on the right have brought together a coalition like I've never seen. And what about Trump's Music Modernization Act? Something that, again, President Obama didn't even do. President Donald Trump today moved the music industry into the 21st century. He signed the Music Modernization Act, legalizing the landmark copyright reform for songwriters. The goal is to ensure songwriters receive pay for the products that they produce when you're listening to them on streaming services. Tennessee Senator Lamar Alexander championed that new law. He says the Music Modernization Act is the most important law in a generation to help make sure that our songwriters and singers all over America can keep working and making a decent living by ensuring they're paid when their songs are played. This is a great day for songwriters. It is. So basically it's you family business. Everybody need to make, yeah, make your money. And helping them make it. a decent living by ensuring they're paid when their songs are played. This is a great day for songwriters. It is. And, and artists. And artists. artists, okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't give it up to artists, artists, okay. Don't, don't, don't oh, cheat those artists Don't cheat us. Who, who benefits the most from the side? I'm saying as far as. I think both. Both? Both, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, I lean more to the the artists. Yeah. Because I'm a, I'm a performer, you know. But uh, it helps not just the writers, but the singers. And not just black, but black, white, all country, jazz, everything. So I'm very, I'm very impressed with my that. So it's a great thing what Trump is doing today. The it is, it is, it okay. is. And you know what? I told everybody, please, whatever your opinion or your decision, please, let's keep it tight. Let him sign it, please. Uh, look, today, today. Don't mess him up, please. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'm really glad about that. Yeah. And then there is President Trump's support nice. for school choice. The time has come to pass school choice for Americans' children. So on the campaign trail, Trump didn't talk much about K-12 policy, but he did, when he did, he talked about school choice. And Betsy DeVos is a longtime school choice advocate. Well, I believe that the family, that parents are the primary educator for their child or their children. And, uh, and we have, in, to a large extent, uh, removed a lot of that ability to direct and control by forcing way too many families to uh, assigned schools based mm. on where they live. Now, mm. choice in education. See, see, <clears throat> I like that. I like that. What shouldn't, you, shouldn't I feel like everybody should be happy? Because why would you want somebody to assign your kid to somewhere you really don't, don't want? Don't want them to go. And you just like, oh, okay, well, oh well, it's a sign. Instead of you being a parent and like, oh, I want my kid to go here. Yeah, they'll learn this. They'll learn that. It may cost as much, but they'll learn but this yeah, and they'll I learn that. Facts. Yeah. But most likely, Rennie and Love most likely be homeschooled. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, that's... Poor everyone else. Too many families to uh, assign schools based on where they but live. But that's the thing, though. No, it's choice. It's, it's education. school choice. You you you, you have that choice. I mean, you had a choice. Yeah. Uh, assigned schools based on where they live. Now, choice in education is something that blacks and browns want. Guess who doesn't want it? White Dems. You know who would never put their own kids in an urban school in a million years. Now, the proposal that I brought forth on education <laughs> ends all private charter schools in this country. If I'm president, Betsy DeVos's whole notion from charter schools to this are gone. We're going mm. we to we have the same choice that you make for your kids because I read that your children went to private school. No, much, much public school. But we, we, even if it was public school, it probably was the best public school. I can't pack up and say I'm leaving Hyde Park and going to Germantown. That's our suburban area because I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. My daughter can't afford it. So we want to make what we got great, whether it's charter or traditional. And really, 
Public schools are charter in yeah. where I come from, and we make parents know that they charter schools are public schools mm -hmm. too. So let me just say, I appreciate nothing more than how much you care about your children and your grandchildren and getting them educated, and that's all I want to do. If I don't have the pieces right, then I'll go back and read it. Go back and read it, I'll please. Go back and, read it and I promise you, I the promise next time you see me, if it's reading the way, it's going to benefit well, our children. I'm not making promises. Go back and read it. I'll go read it. Sure well, just promise. read it. That's okay. But it turns out that Senator Warren had a son in private school from the fifth grade on. Let's move on. What about illegal immigration? So, <clears throat> so basically, like, how I look at it, like, with the whole school thing, is that I feel like it's important to your parents having that choice, uh, although some people can't afford, you know, just what she said, you can't afford. Um, <clears throat> but at the same time, I look at these schools need, it's, it's more than, I want to say it's, it's more with the community as well. If you're looking, and I don't, I don't want to be, you know, one of those people, I'm just saying like me as being me from my mindset, this is my opinion. I feel like regardless, like where your, where your, your kids is going, I feel like it's important for the parents to have a choice, rather it's homeschool, rather it's uh, charter, private, uh, public, anything, you know, um, school-wise, okay? But there's a lot of parents saying, oh, I can't afford it. I can't even afford to drive them 20 minutes, 25 minutes yeah. to school every day. But at the same time, I have this school here. I have this school. So I'm pretty sure uh, so like here, here, here we at, school. yeah, here we at, uh, there's online school and there's three high schools going towards that way, yeah. that way, and there's two ready. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I look at the fact that I feel like it's like that product of your environment. So if your environment is this and the community is more, it's, it's basically it's more than just that school. The community, it's the community too. So I feel like it's the community and then it goes back. So it's really everything that ties to the school. The school. Yeah. Plus now there's a lot of online schooling, so. It is a lot of online schooling. That's another big option too. Yeah. But let's move on. What about illegal immigration? And what does that have to do with blacks? Now we must implement an immigration system that will allow our citizens to prosper for generations to come. Today, we are presenting a clear contrast. Democrats are proposing open borders, lower wages, and, frankly, lawless chaos. We are proposing an immigration plan that puts the jobs, wages, and safety of American workers first. A steady stream of people showing up at the building behind me. We're told 150 applicants in the- I feel like that's important, though, because if, like, regardless, like, somebody coming here illegal and people coming here illegal how 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 would y'all this is a this is a real question um i'm asking y'all how would y'all feel if a legal immigrant or anything like that regardless of where from come here and take your place at work or run this run it and there's a lot of people that you know talk shit about that and say oh this that and then you know and i feel like that's really important because that's just like i don't know like it, you going to somebody else's country and yeah. you doing that plus they're getting paid like under the table type like i i just like that's i don't know i don't know like i said i'm learning as i go um chris learned as she go so i don't really know it's a lot of thoughts it's a lot of you know it's a lot to process of american workers first a steady stream of people showing up at the building behind me. We're told 150 applicants in the first three hours of this job at fair with about 30 minutes left to go. Cook Foods has not said how many people they're looking to hire, but the folks that we spoke with said they're definitely 
ready to go to work. Uh, Cook is just one of several chicken processing companies to get raided by ICE agents last week with 680 workers detained for possible immigration violations. Peter Kirsten now is a friend I've known yeah. some 40 Man, years. They're running it He's up. a longtime yeah. member of the U.S. Civil Rights Commission. Professor Briggs testified before the Civil Rights Commission. We had a whole host of people testifying before the Civil Rights Commission. The one cohort, the one demographic in the United States of America most harmed, most palpably harmed by illegal immigration are black Americans and Politicians, open borders politicians know this. They know this because there have been numerous hearings before Congress on this. I've testified in a number of these hearings. George Borjas has testified in a number of these hearings. Uh, Stephen Camerata has testified, and we've presented all of this evidence, all of this data, that the pernicious effect of illegal immigration, of open borders, has had on black Americans in terms of uh, employment. Nearly <coughs> one million fewer blacks work today because of the competition from illegal immigration than otherwise would be the case if we had a secure border. And it also depresses wage rates by a tune of $1,800 a year. George Borjas estimates that the depressive effects of illegal immigration on wages is anywhere from $99 billion to $118 billion annually, cumulatively, but it has the most significant effect on the black community. And did I mention and Trump's... I, <clears throat> I definitely want to say this too as well. I know we got five minutes left, but I do got to get this off my chest. There's a lot of people here um, in America that uh, becomes lazy. Um, and that fact, you don't want to work, you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that. Um, believe it or not, there's a lot of jobs out here. Um, or um, there's things that uh, you can do uh, to make money um, if you get up and try. But that's just me. Um, I try to help out as much as I can. That's just like you watching right now, you need help, hit me up. I tell everybody that. Yeah. Um, I literally tell everybody that. Um, I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm just like the best and the, the best reactor or the best YouTube, I I soon want to be, but I, I'm not. All I want to do is help. Um, I helped my cousin. Uh, my cousin got monetized within a week and a half. Um, Chris, I got her monetized with less than a week uh, when, when she started her channel. Um, and I feel like uh, it's something that I want to do to help uh, others out and support others, my brother, my dad, uh, with a lot of things, with stuff that I know how to do. And that's, you know, Instead doing this. Instead of just sitting around. Instead of just sitting around. And they don't, they don't sit around. Yeah, I'm not going. Yeah. They're not sitting around not at all. But I'm just yeah, they're In working general. people. But there's a lot of people that literally don't really want to do anything. Um, and they rather sit at home and get those. Uh, the benefits. The benefits. And it's a lot of people that can't. I'm not knocking anybody that can't, uh, that needs those benefits, that actually can't do anything. Oh, so some people actually do. Them, but. <clears throat> yeah, but it's a lot of people that actually don't. That's that's just me though. That's my opinion. I'll look at it. Expansion of so-called enterprise zones that will benefit the inner city. It's a big day. Yes, sir. Thank you. In a few moments, I will sign an executive order launching a new White House opportunity. This is a very big thing that Tim and I and everybody have been working on for a long time, and Revitalization Council. This council will coordinate efforts across the entire federal government to deliver jobs, investment, and growth to the communities that need it the most. And then there's the commutation of the sentence of Alice Johnson, given a long sentence for a nonviolent drug offense, and the pardoning of Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight champion who was busted for a crime involving the transportation of a woman across state lines for purposes of sex. It was a BS charge just designed to nail him. And President Trump, once again, did something Obama did not do, and that is to pardon Jack Johnson. I remember this. I didn't, I didn't really look too much into this, but I heard about this. Mother gets a second chance at freedom after President Trump commutes her life sentence. Alice Marie. You remember this? Yeah. We watched the episode of the Kardashians yeah. or something, and she. Yes, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah. Johnson served 21 years for a nonviolent first time drug charge, but a serious charge of drug trafficking and money laundering. Her story caught the eye of Kim Kardashian West, who made a personal plea for the release to President Trump last week. Johnson shared an emotional reunion with her family after walking out of an Alabama prison yesterday. They are the folks who had been lobbying uh, for this pardon uh, for, for years now. Johnson was the first African-American heavyweight champ. And in what was seen by many as a racial injustice, Johnson was convicted of a crime back in 1913. That crime was transporting a, 
a white woman across state lines. Uh, he died in 1946. Senator John McCain, former Senate Majority Leader uh, Harry Reid, had also been pushing Johnson's case for years. But again, President Trump has uh, posthumously uh, pardoned Jack Johnson. And did I mention that Trump has upspending on historically black colleges and universities by 14%? Education has the power to uplift. It has the power to transform, and perhaps most important, education has the power to create greater equality and justice in our lives. That's why today I'm thrilled to be signing an executive order to recognize the importance of historically black college and universities. Very important. They have played such an important role in achieving progress for African Americans and in our nation's march for justice. HBCUs have been really pillars of the African-American community for more than 150 years. Amazing job. And a grand and enduring symbol of America at its absolute best. And I congratulate you all to say that. Finally, a word or two about the President. Shouldn't, y shouldn't everybody be happy about? I'm just saying, like, I, I feel like everybody should be happy about that. I mean, that's a good thing. That's a real good thing. Regardless of however you put it, that's a real good say thing. That. Finally, a word or two about President Trump's support for law enforcement. Now, what does it have to do with black and brown people living in the inner city? Well, consider the Ferguson effect. That is what happens when officers are falsely accused of racism, as happened after Ferguson. Cops pull back and crime went up. And guess who got disproportionately hurt by that crime? Black and brown people. Well, the Ferguson effect is the twin phenomenon of officers backing off of proactive policing and the resulting increase in crime. Last year, we had the largest one-year increase in homicide in nearly a half century. The vast majority of the victims of that homicide increase have been black. The reason for this crime increase, I believe, is that officers are living today under a false and dangerous narrative that says that they are shot through with systemic racism, that we're living through an epidemic of racially biased police shootings, and that the type of proactive policing that I think is responsible for a 20-year crime decline that this nation has enjoyed uh, is under attack as racially oppressive. Bottom line, whether you're talking about the First Step Act, the Music Modernization Act, the tremendous economy that's benefiting black people, the fact that Donald Trump is doing something about illegal immigration, the fact that Donald Trump supports school choice, this man has got to be the worst racist ever. I think white people that like black people, y'all should get some sort of wristband, a hand stamp, or something. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious. Something you can show in a dark alley to keep you from getting robbed. You know. You might not think that's a good idea, but you wish you had a wristband. You leave tonight and you're in that dark alley. Give me your money, white boy. Ah, ah, ah. Go ahead. Let her through. She got the wristband. Let her through, Chucky. So, where's Donald Trump's wristband? I'm Larry Elder, and this has been the Larry. I don't know. I don't find dude funny. <laughs> Anyways, you feel me? Uh, I feel like that's something that's you know uh, important. Uh, I feel like a lot of people should um, you know look look and, and and learn. I feel like that's something that I, I learned a lot with this video of what Donald Trump uh, has done, um, and I, I enjoyed the video honestly. Because you see so much stuff on like social media. Yeah. Where he's like this bad person, but then now like we're seeing like yeah, basically others. And the crazy thing is, is that I have a lot of people talking crazy, saying I literally received a DM this morning on Instagram saying that they're a Democrat and they're unsubscribing from me. Um, they love my family and they do this and they they appreciate this and appreciate that. If they, I feel like if they actually loved myself and my family and they appreciated it, um, you would have stayed. Um, or you would have commented down a video or send me a video like, look, this is what Joe Biden has done. You react to this video. I don't get videos about Joe Biden doing anything um, that I've seen. Uh, so when I say that, I literally react to things that subscribers and fans and uh, people post. I literally look and I write a list down on my phone. 
literally a list down on my phone of what to react to. This is not something that just like, oh, we're going to react to this one today because they're talking about Donald Trump or this is that. <laughs> they're like people literally comment and they have, you know, likes on it. Even if they don't have like, I want to see everything. So if you are one of those people that's a Democrat or just absolutely loves Joe Biden because of Joe Biden, comment down the video. Anybody else, comment down the video. A new comment down the video. It's easy. Everybody does it. You don't have to sit there and talk crazy to me or say this or say that when I'm asking y'all and I'm telling you, just comment down the video. Everybody. But literally, nobody does. Yeah. And it's crazy. Make sure y'all hit that like button, hit that subscribe. I definitely appreciate everybody tuning in and watching this reaction. Catch y'all next one.